hey YouTube, Sign here, and after the hype release of version 2.2 with Robin, we have yet another physical 5 star character releasing right after, who arrives with a bang. Boot Hill, who will be our newest hunt character, comes with many pros and cons. However, one thing is for sure, boy does he look cool just standing there in that character stat screen. We will be taking an early look at him on the creator experience server, which may have some small changes with the official release, but they should be minor if there are any. So let's go over his abilities, what are his best builds, best light cones, and some of his best team setups and partners to maximize his damage, and for those who are overachievers, his most valuable Eidolons. But before that, if you at any point find this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more character guides like this in the future. Like I previously mentioned before, Boot Hill will be a 5 star physical hunt unit, but he isn't your typical hunt unit. Instead of focusing solely on raw critical damage, he wants to be a mixed attacker focusing on both break effect and critical damage. Where a lot of Boot Hill's gimmicks begin is starting with his skill Sigiling Tango, which will place both Boot Hill and one enemy target in the standoff state. Also, it enhances his basic attack for two turns. While in this mode, he cannot use his skill and activation of it does not consume a turn. In this mode, the enemy in standoff becomes taunted, things similar to preservation main character skill, and when either target in the standoff mode gets attacked by someone inside of the standoff mode, they will receive an increased damage of 30%. When either the enemy is defeated or weakness broken, Boot Hill will gain one stack of pocket trick shot and will end the standoff mode. Honestly, you could think of this mode as something similar to Blade when it comes to enhancing his basic attack for a couple of turns. Since we are on basic attacks, let's talk about Boot Hill's enhanced basic attack, Fanning the Hammer, which will not recover skill points. However, it will do 60 toughness damage, which is double your average basic attack. Boot Hill's ultimate, Dust Devil Sunset Rodeo, will apply physical weakness imprint before attacking for two turns and delay the enemy attack by 40%. Honestly, with the right setup and speed tuning, lapping enemies will be a joke, especially when paired with units like Ruan Mei. Boot Hill's talent, 5 Peas in a Pod, enhances Boot Hill's enhanced basic attack toughness reduction for each stack of pocket trick shot by 50%, stacking up to three times. And if the unit in standoff is weakness broken with the enhanced basic attack based on the number of pocket trick shots, it will increase Boot Hill's physical break damage. While Boot Hill's technique 3 9x smile will allow Boot Hill to apply physical weakness to the target for two turns, similar to his ultimate after the first cast of his skill. Finally, one small thing I didn't mention is that any stacks of pocket trick shot will carry on to the next battle, but this doesn't really affect any of the endgame stuff like Memory of Chaos or Pure Fiction. Boot Hill's talent tree is pretty straightforward for the most part. A2 point blank will give 10 energy to Boot Hill when he gets a pocket trick shot no matter how many he has. A4 above snakes. While in standoff mode, the damage Boot Hill receives from enemies not in the standoff mode will be reduced by 30%. Finally, A6, Ghost Load, is honestly one of the strongest trace abilities I've seen in the game, at least in the stats department. This will increase Boot Hill's critical rate and critical damage based on his current break effect amount. So that means that anything in game that will boost or lower his break effect will be calculated into these stats. But for the critical rate, it will be 10% of its current break effect and for critical damage, it will be 50%. And these will cap at 3x the amount respectively. So critical rate will be capping at 30% and critical damage will be capping at 150%. Meaning that you will need to have Boot Hill at 300% break effect to have these benefits at their maximum which is insane since the proper build Boot Hill will be easily hitting over 300 critical damage and 100% critical rate with a proper team, but more on this in a later section. While I don't think I need to talk too much on this in terms of order, since all three are a must grab. 
Okay, it's high noon and it's time to lock in because the Boot Hill stats and build is going to be a long one. If you ever thought, who is the most stat hungry character in Honkai Star Rail? Well, this guy right here surely is trying to fight for that crown. Let's first begin with the elephant in the room, potential gear sets, because right now, they ain't looking too good for our guy. When I have to say one of his most optimal four piece set is Thief of Shooting Meteor, you know we're gonna be in for some real funny stuff. There are other potential options such as the Musketeer or the physical set, but because of its high requirements in other areas, it's best to grab what you can in either break effect or critical here or wait for a potential better set in the future. While for its two piece set, we are looking at Talia Kingdom of Banditry or Rutland Arena. This really comes down to how good your speed rolls went because if you can't hit the 145 minimum speed for Talia, it's not going to be worth it to run and you will need at least 13 speed with speed boots to make this viable. Rutland Arena's 70% critical rate won't be an issue for the most part. Now, the reason I wanted to get the sets out of the way, because let's get into the fun part. What stats are we looking for starting with our main stats? When it comes to the body piece, there are two camps. We can take the critical rate. This is going to be the 99% of players who aren't going to spend 10 hours trying to optimize the full team for Boot Hill just to do a little bit more damage. Then we have critical damage. This is for the 1% who believe they will roll over 10% critical rate on every piece of gear and run his signature light cone. While for boots, we have speed. Since a lot of his gimmick is based around weakness break, the faster he is, the more chances he gets to attack and reduce toughness, not to mention the 145 speed requirements if you want to run Talia. For planar spear, we only really have one option, which is physical damage. Anything else is just not worth it. Shocker. And finally, for link rope, we're going to go with break effect. The reason for this is simple. 300% break effect even with buffers is extremely high and pretty much unattainable without it. Now usually, I never save the substats for this late, but because there is so much based on this, let's break them down. The top 4 substats we are looking for are break effect, critical rate, critical damage, and speed. Break effect is by far the most important stat, followed by speed. Critical stats should be a second thought. And from my personal experience, 160 speed or above is a sweet spot for Boot Hill. Since I assume most people won't have Boot Hill's signature light cone, let's start with how your substats will look there first. Assuming everything else is maxed, Boot Hill's base break effect with break rope and thief set and Talia is 32 plus 37.3 plus 64.8 plus 36 for a total of 170. That means you would need 130 in substats or party comps to make up for this. Normally, I don't include comps in this section, but because they affect your base stats, I would include two of the best options being either Ruan Mei or Trailblazer Harmony, both of which want to run the Watchmaker set, which gives another 30% to Boot Hill. Including either Ruan Mei or Trailblazer's ability, you can reduce that by another 20 or 30%, which means you realistically need 70 or 80% from substats, which is around 15% per piece, which is like two rolls in the stat, alongside the 13 speed for Talia, but optimally you want 28 speed substats for 160 plus. Also, yes, I know Trailblazer E4 exists, but I don't want to even try to calculate that in here. Everything else should be thrown into critical rate or critical damage, whichever depends since you may want to swamp teams or decide to run both harmony units together. As for those running the signature light cone, just take the additional 60% break effect and throw the other stats into either critical or speed, depending on what team you want to run. Example being, if you want to run Boot Hill with Sparkle, you may want to run a 1 speed faster Boot Hill so that he can take 2 actions quicker with Sparkle. I know this may be still confusing to some people, so if you have any extra questions, just message me down below in the comments there. Now we are on to my favorite section, Light Cones. 
Now, normally I would have this section be its own video in which I would showcase the damage for each, but now we upgraded and I would just show this wonderful chart I have here with damage percents for each light cone because we get it done like this now. Now let's talk because there is a lot to explain with these light cones and things to factor in, starting with this signature light cone. To put it simply, all of this light cone's damage is going to come from break damage. The difference in break damage compared to standard light cones is a little over 25%, so you gain massively on each break. Because of this, the difference in these light cones has a lot of variables, and this is based on a zero pocket trick shot boot hill, since that's how many you will go in with Memory of Chaos, but once you gain three, the gap between this signature light cone and every other light cone is staggering. Next, we gotta talk about the elephant in the room, subscribe is more, because I ain't never seen this light cone succeed until this character. And outside of break damage, majority of Boot Hill's damage will come from his auto attack, not his ultimate. Because of this, not using your ultimate is a viable way of playing while you advance forward him with someone like Sparkle or Branya. This will only really work against physical weakness enemies to get these numbers, but even at 75% uptime, which I have on the sheet, you can still use it against non-weakness and succeed. Other notable options such as Zealous Light Cone and Sword Play still work should you not want to use the previous mentioned light cones, and for free to play players, keep running cruising in the stellar seat. I kept the S1 still in here for this video. I am unsure how long I will keep these in here. I may remove them for one video and see if people really need them just to save myself time. Otherwise, I will keep doing this if they are needed. I just don't want the list to get to like 50 light cones in the future, so trying to get feedback on this. Okay, for all three of you in this section of the video, congrats, you either have too much money or you either think the stance he has during the character's stat screen looks as cool as I do. Either way, let's talk about those pesky Eidolons, starting off with E1, Dusty Trail Lone Star, which gives you one stack of pocket trick shot at the start of battle and allows Boot Hill to ignore enemy defense by 16%. This is going to be his best damage boost for just one Eidolon, so expect to not see any huge damage increases after this until E6. E2 Milestone Mongerer will give one skill point when Boot Hill gains a pocket trick shot in standoff mode and increases its break effect by 30%. This is just quality of life in its core, better stat spread and easier skill rotations, but not much more. E4 Cold Cut Chef will increase the damage Boot Hill does to an enemy in standoff mode by 12% and reduce the damage he takes from them by 12%. Not bad, but if you've gone this far, for this small increase you may as well go the full distance. Finally, we have E6 Crowbar's Hotel's Raccoon, which when Boot Hill activates his talent, Break Damage Effect, it will deal additional break damage equal to 40% of the original break damage and deal additional break damage to adjacent enemies. Yeah, you heard it right. We got multi-targeting hitting hunt units now. No one is safe in these streets. But when it comes down to recommendations, just E1 and even that is kind of a stretch for me personally. Now, because the cast of characters is getting much bigger, I decided to break down each character recommendation into three categories, attack, defense, and utility roles. For those who do multiple, they'll be labeled as hybrid. Obviously, this may not apply to every character and there may be some crossover, but hopefully this will make things a lot easier for people to understand. Starting with our attack support, we have Clara, who can technically fall in the defense group thanks to her higher hostility, but the reason for her being in attack is her ability to do decent damage while also reducing toughness bar for boot hill to weakness break. Next we have Xu Sheng. She can make for a decent second DPS to help break enemies quicker and while the enemy is in break thanks to the increased movement speed and advance forward. For our defense supports, we have Gallagher, who works not only to heal the team and clean clear debuffs at E2 when needed, but he can boost break damage with his ultimate's debuff, which is Boot Hill's main source of damage. Next, 
Fuswen, who completely removes the need for critical rate substats should you run critical rate body piece, not to mention her taking some of the additional damage that Boot Hill should take in the standoff mode will help save him from any extremely strong single target hits. Now for utility supports, we start off with the free MVP Trailblazer Harmony, who not only buffs our Boot Hill stats, can also make for a decent breaker themselves. Ron May, who is the premium break unit, just her ultimate alone is enough. Everything else she does is just extra juice. Branya, why have Boot Hill attack once when you can have Boot Hill attack twice? Now, I will be including a quick group of characters who can work in these roles. I may end up doing ratings in the future, but again, want more feedback on this too. But let's get into the real stuff team building. So I have a few teams here and a team template so you can get an idea on how to properly build around Boot Hill. Starting with Boot Hill himself, kind of hard to not include the character you are building for. Next we have a utility slot. This one is not flexible so include one of the recommended units in here. This next slot can be a toss up of another utility or attacker or hybrid slot. Depending on your roster, I would say double utility performs better unless heavily invested into your attacker. While the final slot will be your defense or hybrid slot, in most fights you will go with something defense heavy like Fu Swen or Gallagher, but in fights where the defense isn't required, you can go with a more offensive option or if you have just insanely cracked characters with good stats. Now that we got the team template completed, let's look at our teams. First team we have will consist of Boot Hill, Trailblazer Harmony, Gallagher, and Asta. I tried to make it as free to play friendly as possible since I know not everyone has premium characters. Our second team will be a bit more premium, consisting of Boot Hill, Ron May, Trailblazer Harmony, and Fuswin. This team will be for those who wanted to show off on the stat screen because Boot Hill gear requirements just got way lower. This team does lose a bit in the break stat potential since solely relying on Boot Hill. I would recommend this team against imaginary ice or quantum weakness enemies, hopefully with two of these weaknesses, mainly since you can apply weakness break with Boot Hill. Finally, we have our first no trailblazer harmony team, since I know some people don't really like running the trailblazer for whatever reason that may be. This consists of Boot Hill, Branya, Ron May, Hua Hua, which I like to dub Boot Hill Turbo. This focuses purely on getting Boot Hill as many turns as possible and rapid firing enemies to death. There are many other teams that can be created for him, but hopefully this gives people a bit more guidance on how to build around him. Now, while I know some of you may skip Boot Hill simply because of our most recent character reveals for version 2.3 and we can't roll for every new unit that comes out, he is far from a weak character and simply got caught in a pincher attack for banners. For those of you who do end up rolling for him, just expect to optimize him, it's going to be easier as time goes on since I feel Hoyoverse may be giving break characters their time to sign very soon, much like how they did with follow-up attack characters and damage over time characters. But that's just what I think. If you have any difference in opinion or questions for me, comment down below and thank you for making it this far. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more character guides in the future. Until then, expect a new versus video on Boot Hill coming soon. Until then, thanks for watching and I will catch you on my next video.